Hello, beautiful souls. My name is Adama Cisse, and I'm the founder of Lilith Astrology. You can follow my YouTube channel at Lilith Astrology or on Instagram, also at Lilith Astrology. So let me just tell you how excited I am that Nadia asked me to come on this channel and talk to you guys about past lives astrology. Um, this is something that I specialize in and also um, I have a lot of knowledge in being a Scorpio. It's all about karma. It's all about transformation and death and rebirth, as I'm sure you all know. So I'm very excited to come on this channel and talk to you about this very important information that's found right in your birth chart. So let's get started. So the North and South Node. Um, this, to me, the North and South Node is the compass in your life. It's the compass in your current life, and it's the compass from your past life. It's the direction that you're going from the past life that you have lived. It's the lessons that you are supposed to be learning in this life, things that you're carrying over from a past life. So understanding this information, understanding where your south node is, what house your south node is, what sign it's in, understanding what um, the same information, understanding what sign your north node is in, what house it's in, can give you information on you know, what career path you're supposed to be on, what types of people you should be surrounding yourself with, um, what may be comfortable for you in this life and what you should aspire towards or what you should make an effort and um, try to put your attention towards. Um, I like to call the South Node the Cosmic Snickers Bar. So the South Node is what you mastered in a past life, what you are comfortable in because you had mastered this in a past life and in this life it's a comfort zone for you so when you're you know hungry a Snickers bar is an easy thing to grab it's it's you know chewy it's sweet it's satiating at the time but is it really serving you in the long run is it really as you know helping you ascend as a person is it really helping you know move you forward in this life it's not so your north node is where you need to go it's where you need to aspire to be in this life. So I call that the kale salad, the cosmic kale salad of this life. So for example, I'll use myself. I have the south node in Libra in the fourth house. So it's very easy for me to fall back on others, to fall back on my family, um, to fall back on friends, um, to really put other people first, um, to really you know, place relationships as more of a high importance in myself. And I've, I found myself, before I had learned this information, before I became an astrologer, I found myself doing these things. And at the end of the day, it wasn't fulfilling me really as a person. So I had mastered that in my past life. So maybe I was a relationship coach or maybe I was in a happy marriage and maybe I, you know, found fulfillment through relationships and through other people. But my north node is the complete opposite. So my north node is in the 10th house in Aries. So that's the complete opposite. I need to be, um, you know, a little bit more of a go-getter. I need to exhibit more areas, areas qualities, like um, putting myself before others, um, putting my needs first, making sure I'm taken care of first. Also being, you know, more aggressive in terms of my career path and what I want to do in this life and not just falling back on home and falling back on family, but really being a pioneer and putting myself out there. So I want you to take a look. You can go on any free birth chart calculator. Take a look at where your north and south node lie in your chart. And that will tell you, you know, what path you need to be on in this life. That will tell you, okay, in a past life, I exhibited more, for example, me. I exhibited more Libra qualities. And in this life, I need to be more of a go-getter. And it's not comfortable. The kale salad, you know, it's not as yummy to eat. You know, depending on who you ask, it's not as yummy to eat, but it's what's going to make you healthy and strong and fulfill your body and your um, health needs first. So I think that's one of the most important um, aspects that I look at in the chart when it comes to understanding your past life. So the second place I look is actually retrogrades in the chart. So... Um, when a planet is retrograde in astrology, um, it's kind—it's of, an optical illusion. So basically, 
you know, I kind of, I liken it to when you are in a car and you're driving down the highway and the person next to you, you end up going faster than the person next to you so they look like they're moving backward. They're not really moving backward, but just the optics of it, I guess it's a little physics, but the optics of it looks like they're looking backward or moving backwards. So that's similar in astrology. So when we speak about Mercury retrograde or Pluto retrograde or Jupiter retrograde, um, that is essentially what the planets are doing. So one big retrograde that I look for is actually Pluto retrograde. Um, I think this is especially because Pluto is such a karmic planet. Pluto, you know, ruled the underworld in mythology. Um, it was all about death and rebirth and transformation, which, I mean, that's what past lives are all about. Um, and so when there's Pluto retrograde in the birth chart, you may have gone through some power struggles in a past life. You may have gone through um, someone taking away your power. Um, you may have been, you know, a servant, or you may have been very poor, or um, you may have experienced just a loss of power, like a tremendous loss of power in your past life. And then when you come into this life with Pluto retrograde in your birth chart, that is now something that you must ascend from. And if you don't have awareness of this, it can be very easy to fall into traps of um, giving away your power in this life. So it's kind of similar to the North and South Node. It's very comfortable to fall back into those past life things that you were used to. But we have to work towards ascending from that in this life. And, you know, when I see Pluto retrograde in the birth chart, I'll give, you know, a recent um, generation as example. If I see Pluto Scorpio retrograde in the birth chart, that's a huge loss of power. And my recommendation for that is in this life, be aware of your power. Be aware of who you are, that you are a powerful being, that you don't deserve to have your power taken away from you, and don't give anyone the permission to, you know, stand over you and um, take away who you are. Um, another retrograde that I look for in the birth chart is Mercury retrograde, and it's actually very common. Um, Mercury goes retrograde, you know, it's not, not anything, you know, we all know this, it's not anything um, abnormal, um, but a Mercury retrograde is similar, but it affects your speech and your throat chakra and um, how you speak in this life. And, and um, someone with Mercury retrograde in their birth chart may have dealt with not being able to speak their truth in the past life. Um, depending on um, what sign and what house it's in. Someone may have, you know, felt stifled in a past life and not been able to fully express themselves. So they come into this life and again, you know, it's easy for you to fall into the pattern of not being able to fully express yourself. Or it takes a little more effort for you to do that in this life. And so now, you know, with the awareness of this exists in your chart, you can work on that and you can fully make sure that every day like am I fully expressing myself am I being true to myself and you know what's great actually about mercury retrograde is that it doesn't affect you as much as it does the rest of us so people with mercury retrograde in their birth chart kind of have an easier time during mercury retrograde than the rest of us so there's a little bit of a plus with uh with mercury retrograde in your birth chart another um planet or I should say actually an asteroid that I look at is Chiron. Um, so Chiron is the wounded healer in um, Greek mythology and he could not heal himself but through the healing of others was how he was able to find solace and eventually heal himself. So wherever you have Chiron placed in the birth chart that is a wounding from past life. It can be a wounding from childhood but it's an area of your life that you will have to take an extra step to work on. Um, and, you know, when you get to your Chiron return, there can be some major breakthroughs in this area of your life. Usually when someone masters their, masters their Chiron, they can then teach or they can then help other people. And that also helps um, heal that wounding for themselves. So some karmic placements that I look at to see, you know, past life, okay, 
what happened with this person um, before they entered into this current world is if Chiron is placed in a karmic house. And the karmic houses are the fourth house of Cancer, the eighth house of Scorpio, and the twelfth house of Pisces. So I'll use myself again as an example. I have Chiron in the twelfth house. So that is an extreme situation happened to me in my past life before I got on this planet um, that has given me an unconscious wounding. So 12th house is anything unseen, it's a psychic realm, it's past life, it's things of not of this earth. So since Chiron is in Gemini in my 12th house, it more than likely was I was wounded in speech and expressing myself in some way in a past life. So through that knowledge, I also have realized that this has made me a great astrologer. This has made me a great healer because I can understand collective pain. I can understand subconscious pain and be able to communicate back that pain um, to the world. So, you know, for instance, if someone has Chiron in the eighth house, this is, you know, a house that rules occult studies. This is a house that rules witchcraft and um, death and rebirth and transformation. So, you know, someone in a past life may have gone through some traumatic death or some traumatic transformative experience. And now in this life, it is now their duty in order to heal themselves to help other people through um, traumatic incidences and traumatic pain in this life. So another area that I look at in the birth chart is the rising sign. The rising sign is the lens that you wear when you enter this planet. Um, it's also, you know, your personality when you first meet someone. Um, it's your filter. And not only that is, I believe the rising sign is remnants of the sun sign you were in a past life. So that's why it's still kind of there on your appearance. It's still there in your, your you know, you still resonate. Um, that sign when people first meet you. It's a layer. Um, so, for instance, you know, I'll give myself as an example, Cancer. I am a Cancer rising. Um, so I was Cancer in my past life. And I still brought that energy with me over to this life. But another aspect that I, or another factor that I look at is what degree. So I am a 23 degree Cancer. So that makes me an old soul. Um, so a, a, a rising sign that is more on the late degree, so I would say over 20 degrees, um, you have lived and you have progressed in that sun sign that you were in a past life. So you are, um, I guess, more you are more experienced when you come into this life as that rising sign. You know, when you get more towards 28, 29 degree, this is also, you know, called the cusp. When you get towards that, um, that means you are finishing a cycle, you are finishing a sign. So you have really harnessed and lived through that. And you are now like you're getting towards that next, you know, that next phase, that next sign. Um, so if I see someone is a 29 degree rising, you are an old soul. And you've lived through a lot and you are almost, you're almost to that, that next sign. Um, I also look at the type of sign because then that sets up the chart and um, what what planet is ruling that sign. Um, if it's and especially if it's a more karmic sign, that that determines something for me as far as um, your past lives. So if it's a Scorpio rising, if it's a um, Saturn ruled chart, so an Aquarius rising or Capricorn rising. Those are very karmic planets, Pluto and Saturn. So that tells me that there was a lot of struggle in your past life and harsh lessons or death and transformation. And you, if you're a late degree Capricorn rising, you've entered this life with a filter of um, you have learned some harsh lessons. You are very realistic. Um, you carry that over onto this life. So that is like on your ascendant and that is, you know, on your personality and very obvious. Um, and Saturn and Pluto are very karmic planets. Um, another um, sign that I would say is a very um, karmic placement is, you know, a Neptune chart. So a Pisces rising. 
Um, you know, this is a very spiritual sign. Um, Neptune is a very spiritual placement and rules all things, you know, not of this realm, not of this earth. Um, so people with this ascendant bring that energy with them when they enter a room. Um, and they, you know, they are very in tune with the other realm. Um, this was something in their past life that they had mastered as their sun sign. Um, so they're still bringing that energy with them in this current life. Another area that I look in the birth chart is if there is a stellium or three or more planets clustered in a karmic house. So the karmic houses I mentioned earlier are the 12th house of Pisces, the 8th house of Scorpio, and the 4th house of Cancer. So if there are planets clustered in that house um, and a lot of energy is concentrated there, then there are certain things in your life that you need to be focusing on karmically. Um, so when I see a chart with, um, for instance, I'll just give, you know, client A, for example. Um, she had Pluto and Scorpio in the eighth, and that was also conjunct her Mars and conjunct her sun. So there, right there is a powerful stellium. So in a past life, she went through um, a very traumatic death experience. Um, and in this life, she is supposed to feel others' pain, help them through that, help them through traumatic experiences, help them through um, solving crisis. Um, that is something that she has put, been put on this planet to do. So understanding that, you know, she would be a great nurse or a great, um, you know, therapist or someone that helps people um, going through difficult times in their life because she is someone that has done that in her past life. So carrying that over to this life, this comes very naturally, and um, she's very talented and great at it. Um, someone with a 12th house stellium, um, you know, these people have, um, a lot of them have, and I think with the 8th house and 4th house as well, psychic ability. Um, the 12th house, like I mentioned earlier, rules, um, you know, the psychic realm, other realms from here, um, what is unseen, um, fantasy, illusion. So these people are very skilled at understanding esoteric topics um, and, you know, bringing them to life for other people. Um, someone with a 12th house stellium, especially if it's, you know, the sun and the moon, um, placed within that stellium are very psychic people. They can make great energy healers, um, psychics, um, clairvoyant healers, um, and they may not find it until later in their life when they realize, oh, like, hey, this, I can put this information that I get, these downloads that I get from the universe, I can put this to good use. Um, and they pull on from, you know, pull from those subconscious areas that a lot of us can't. Um, so that's another um, determinant for me on understanding your past life. So thank you for watching. I want to thank Nadia for having me on her channel, and I hope you all enjoyed. Again, please follow me on Instagram at Lilith Astrology. And I'm also here on YouTube if you want to check out the link below and subscribe. Bye.